So let's see here. They tell us this is F. It's defined on the Poisson interval from negative 5 to 4. It's got three line segments. G is defined as the integral from negative 3 to x of f. Okay, g is defined as the integral from negative 3 to x of f. So for part a, they ask us to find g of 3. So let's plug 3 into that equation they just gave us. We replace x with 3. Now, they are not wanting you to find equations for f of t um, and integrate and plug in the limits. What they are wanting you to use is our geometric formulas to figure out the area under the curve between negative 3 and positive 3. They're wanting you to find that area. So if we look at it, we've got, I don't know, if I'm doing this, I'm going to look at, I've got one big triangle from negative 3 to positive 2. So that's going to be uh, 1 half times the base. So from negative 3 to positive 2 is 5 times the height. That triangle goes up to 4. Plus, I've got this other triangle here that's below the x-axis that has a width of 1 and a height of 2. So I'm going to put a negative in front of this because it's below the x-axis. Negative 1 half times width of 1, height of 2. Crunch the numbers. 1 half times 4 is 2, so the first part is 10. Uh, the second part is negative 1, so g of 3 is equal to 9. You get one point for the answer. They don't give you points for the work or anything like that. They just give you a point for the answer. Okay, let's look at B. On what open intervals contained between negative 5 and 4 is the graph of G both increasing and concave down? So if I'm trying to determine whether where a function is increasing, what am I looking for? What can tell me where the function's increasing? Where the derivative, I don't want F, sorry, G prime, where the derivative is positive. And what about concavity? What's true about the derivative? If it's concave down? Yes, g prime is decreasing. Okay, so to find out where g is increasing, that's where g prime is positive, and it's concave down where g prime is decreasing. So let's think about what g prime is. If g is an integral, then g prime, when you take the derivative of the integral, it's just going to cancel. g prime is f. The graph of f is the derivative of g. So we want to determine where this graph that we're looking at, where is it positive and decreasing. So 0 to 2, anywhere else? Negative 5 to negative 3. Okay. So negative 5 to negative 3 and from 0 to 2. Um, it does say give a reason. So you can say, um, I mean, their, their explanation is pretty good, actually. Um, they, they start the problem by saying g prime is equal to f. And so g is concave down, is increasing in concave down between negative 5 and negative 3 and 0 and 2 because g prime equal to f is positive and decreasing on these intervals. So, I mean, that's a good explanation. So kind of what I wrote there in abbreviated form, you just need to write it out in words. Okay, C. This is why I made you do all those problems with the tables and things like that. 
It says the function h is defined by h of x is g of x over 5x, find h prime of 3. So we've got to take the derivative of this. How do we take the derivative of g of x over 5x? Quotient rule. Okay, quotient rule. We have x's in the numerator and the denominator, so we have to use the quotient rule. So, low times the derivative of the top minus high d low. So we've got 5x times g prime of x minus g of x times 5 over low squared. Now, I really suggest that you do that. Um, write it out like that because they give you two points for h prime of x. They give you two points for h prime of x. Um, now, they take another line and they go ahead and square out the bottom. I don't think you necessarily have to do that part, um, but it can't hurt. 25x squared. I can see a lot of people, that's probably where a lot of people would drop a point. Um, they would forget to square the 5 as well as the x. Okay. So, that's just the first part of it. we got to find h prime of 3. So then we're just plugging in 3 for all of our x's. 5 times 3 times g prime of 3 minus 5 times g of 3 over 25 times 3 squared. So we've got 15 times g prime of 3. Well, g prime is f, so f of 3 is negative 2. Minus 5 times g of 3, well, we calculated that in part A. So here's an example of if you didn't get part A correct, they would grade it using your answer from part A, if you, if you used your answer from part A, which I don't know why you wouldn't, unless you just weren't thinking. Um, so say you, you miscalculated it and you got 7, okay? As long as you plug 7 in right there, they're going to grade it. Uh, they're going to follow that error there. Now, my understanding is that technically this should get you that point, okay? Just plugging, getting rid of all your variables, plugging in the numbers, my understanding is that that would give you credit. Now, you probably feel pretty uncomfortable with that, and I can understand that. Um, so negative 30 minus 45, 25 times 9, 9 quarters is $2.25. Good way to think about it. I've never thought about that before. Um, and again, negative 75 over 225 is acceptable, but 225 is divisible by 75. It would give you negative one third. Okay, so you get two points for the derivative. You get one point for your answer. All right, so last part. Part D, the function P is defined by f of x squared minus x. Find the slope of the line tangent to the graph of P at the point where x equals negative 1. How do we find the slope of tangent lines? Derivative. Okay, so we are looking for P prime of negative 1. So we've got to take the derivative. So, the derivative, p prime of x, would be chain rule f prime of x squared minus x times 2x minus 1. You get two points for that. Even if you can't go any further, you get two points for that part. Um, I don't know exactly how it, they would determine between one or two, how much of a mistake you can make in that. I would assume probably, like, if you didn't use the chain rule correctly, um, they would give you one as opposed to two, but I don't know like, how much you can mess that up. Okay. Uh, then we got to plug in negative one. They want the actual slope. So p prime of negative one is f prime. Negative one squared is one minus negative one. Be careful with that. Two times negative one minus one. So 1 plus negative 1 is 2. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. Now, where are we going to get f prime of 2 from? We've got the graph.
half of f. So what's f prime of 2? The slope of the line at 2. So what is the slope of that line that goes through the point at 2? I believe it is rise over run, and it'll be negative 2. So that is 6. Now, the good news I think about this problem is that P prime of negative 1 is the harder part of the problem, but it's only worth one point. So the whole thing's worth 3, but just this first line is worth 2 out of 3 points. I think it's more likely that you'll get that part. You may get stuck here at the F prime of 2. So it's a good thing in your favor, um, but I think the more difficult part's only worth one point in this problem. Now, I guess we could disagree on what the more difficult part is, but if you remember your rules, like I taught them to you, you should be able to get that first point, first part. Okay? So, a lot of these problems hinge upon the fact they will give you a relationship like this. They'll say that another function is the integral from some point to some x of the graph that they give you. Okay, so this idea right here is very integral that the graph is usually the derivative of that other function. Um, and they will change this number right here. Okay, this, in this case, it was, it wasn't in the middle, um, but it, was, it wasn't at one of the endpoints. Sometimes it's at an endpoint. Um, but I point that out, it didn't come into play here, but what if they ask this to be a negative 5? You would have to be careful with that because you're going from negative 3 to negative 5, you're going backwards. So even though that time interval is above the x-axis, v of negative 5 would have a negative answer because you're going right to left instead of left to right. Okay, so just remember little details like that. Sometimes they like to throw those in there. Um, and then they rely really heavily upon you knowing to do coefficient rules with things like part C, chain rule with part D. Um, you gotta know those kind of bare bones rules um, with the function notation, not an actual function being there. 